Let's see what Unix are saying. What's Unix? What's my guy Unix saying? What's my best pal Unix saying? What's he saying? I know some of you guys love Unix, so let's see what Unix is saying right now. What's his latest? What's he on right now? Unix. Give it up, brother. Tell me what the deal is, brother. So, um, I missed a bit, but I'm not going to watch all these. Jim Connett one, I don't care about. Um, Ariel, as much as I love him, I don't care about this either. Uh, Lucia Gomez thing we can check out. Let's see what Lucia Gomez is saying about Bert here. Cursive and Unique. Let's see what he's saying. <laughs> Bob Kelly has a new podcast, not You Know What Dude, it's called Regs, and they started their own YouTube channel for it, and it's a podcast with Bob Kelly, Joe List, Dan Soder, and Louis J. Gomez. So Another fucking comedy podcast. I actually thought this was Bobby, Bobby Lee, sorry, Bobby Kelly's um, normal podcast he does. What's it called again? It doesn't really matter, but you know what I mean. I didn't know it was another fucking podcast. It's another one. Fucking hell, man. How many shows do these guys fucking have? How many? I'm going to play something Louis J. Gomez said about Burt Kreischer. I find it a little odd, though, that Dan Soder quits doing the bonfire with Big J. So they replace him with Bob Kelly. And now Dan Soder's doing a podcast with Bob Kelly. Kind of weird. But, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and play this. And... I don't think there's anything weird about that. They're still clearly friends. It's just, you know, you get tired of working with the same person all the time, isn't it? It's not a bad, big deal. I don't think so. I don't know. Is there is there, like, a beef going on with the between them? I don't think there is. It seems like Dan Soda and Big J are pretty cool with each other. I think Dan Soda's maybe one of the funniest guys of this whole East Coast crew of people anyway on podcasts. He's incredibly hilarious. Um, and obviously him with Big J is always great. But it runs its course, the show, innit? It's just, it's, it's it's all right to quit a show if you if it's not funny anymore, you know? Big, you know, Joey D has been the best example of it recently. I don't think it's any problem, really. Maybe I'm in the minority. I, I don't know. Maybe there's more law to it. I don't really, I'm not really too clued up on, but I never really got the impression that they hated each other or anything. But anyway, let's play the video. See what Luis J. Gomez had to say. So far, this whole thing has been pretty good, though, the four of them, but let's check out this. Hey, we're doing this no, thing. No, I asked, and you guys agreed. Or so no, I was trying to find the time. And we said, we did try to find the time. And and then, we and then, you know what? You know what? When Bert, when Bert, Bert's like, I have an idea for a trailer. What happens with him? We do it. Seven people all roll around him. Every comic or <laughs> oh, dude, I'll do it. Fuck it. Let's go right it's, now. But it's insane. I every, he, has every, a, he has a few more followers. It doesn't matter. The reason he I has those followers them. is because when I met Bert, he had no fucking followers. He was doing 100 people at Levity Live when I met Bert. Right? Did you, what year did you meet Bert? Oh, that's comedians are fucking weird isn't it i honestly don't think i'd remember stuff like that about somebody to that level of detail no that's a bit strange that he remembers that and used it as a as a retort i knew better when he was performing in front of 10 people it's like are you saying that to like what that you to prove that you've known him longer or to like re-establish that he's not that big of a deal to you because you knew him when he was nothing like it's a bit strange, yeah. That energy is really odd. Why would you say that about somebody that you're friends with? <laughs> or maybe they're not friends. Maybe that's why. Who knows? But it's a strange thing to kind of say straight away to have that, you know, as a first retort. But and again, I don't blame them too much because Burke clearly is a bit is a bit intense, isn't it? Joe Liss has already had his interaction and his fucking dilly ants with fucking Burt, which didn't go well, according to fucking everybody on the pods, right? I think Ari Shafir said this, right, on the on Two Bays One Cave that Joe List and Bert had a bit of an argument during fucking um, Mark Norman's wedding or something, right? Bert was doing what Bert does, trying to be the leader and trying to force people to have fun. And obviously Joe List, number one, is sober. And number two, is very introverted, right? So you can imagine how much Bert must have annoyed Joe. He doesn't drink. He, he and, and also Joe, from what I've understood, listening to Choosing His Stories, he's actually a actual you know recovering fucking alcoholic in that some respects right so he goes out of his way not to be around people that are drunk either so he doesn't like to hang around bars that like he does all the right stuff so imagine hanging around with fucking Bert Kreischer at a wedding or something or like I, what was it I feel like a stag do or something right and you have to kind of put up with his fucking mania during you know your friend's you know special day one of his special days 
It must have been fucking a nightmare. So I don't blame them. Anyway, let's play this song. So I stop rambling. Like 13 years ago. Also, Bert tells a story. He's like, he's like, what up, Lewis? He's like, he goes, uh, it was maybe 14 years ago. He goes, uh, Bert's version of the story when he met me is I said, my name's Lewis Shea Gomez. I'm the Puerto Rican rattlesnake. I'm friends with Bobby Kelly, which is a hilarious thing to just like open with. <laughs> yeah. Didn't happen. It wasn't called the Puerto Rican rattlesnake. You weren't the Puerto Rican rattlesnake until you know what, dude. Yeah. Ju- yeah. And it was way after the fact. And you were, yeah. But you, it's an insight into Bert's mind. He just made up his own story about me. Interesting. And that's how it happened. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny though, isn't it, right? I never knew that was a thing because Bert does repeat that story a lot about meeting Louis J. Gomez the first time. And it's funny that Lewis only is now saying it didn't happen now because he never really set the record straight. But it's also funny that Bert just does this. I honestly thought it was okay. I honestly really thought it was okay that Bert does this to his own stories. As weird as it sounds. Because he sort of like lives this lives in a perpetual state of arrested development anyway. So part of the part, part and parcel of doing that is kind of like always exaggerating the things that you did. What you did with girls, how much you drank, how, how long you stayed up, how many drugs you consumed. It's part and parcel of being that guy, you know, we all knew in college who kind of acted like they were the big boy on campus or big girl on campus. But really, in actuality, it wasn't what they said. They always spice up their stories, but they were fun to listen to right to hear somebody's stories but it's obviously a little bit sad when you're like a grown man in his 50s with children and shit and you're doing this sort of stuff it's a bit weird <laughs> so you would say you, you, you just lawyered the shit out of that you know so you would say that's how he's in i don't want to be a part of any fuck you we're trying to thing. take over and this is how we- yeah joe list is definitely not a fan of bert i don't want to be a part of any of this stuff um from what I, from what Theo said, didn't it? Theo even said it. He, I think he let it slip during Mark Norman's appearance on Theo Fawn's podcast. He said that Joe List and Bert are still not talking till this day. <laughs> till this day, they're not talking. So definitely, Bert Kreischer is a lot to deal with. He's a fucking lot to deal with, which is fucking awesome to hear. I love it. Like it's obvious that the things that we see as fans and as regular civilians on the outside is definitely probably far worse than what happens behind the scenes or in person. Like imagine how exhausting Bert is on a podcast. Can you imagine how exhausting Bert must be in a green room, in a bar, at a club, on the road, just hanging around? Can you imagine how exhausting it must be to be around Bert in his fucking full mania, fully drunk, looking like a ripe Savaloy? <laughs> We just yeah, take over. Take it over. Take over. Yeah, take we over. got your back, Fuck. Joe. Can I get another Fuck Ari old Ari milk latte? What, what did Ari do? What did Ari do? We're going to have to protect our parks. Oh, oh yeah. And fuck Shane Gillis. Damn. Well, let's... Fuck Mark Norman. Whoa! Whoa. Joe, 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 That's how friendships work in the LA com- or in the comedy scene in general, right? Who can help me promote my special? Who can help me sell tickets? Who can help me get views? Who can help me get followers? Who can help me get sponsors? The one who can help me the most is my best friend forever and ever. It is collectively, I don't know, 320,000 <laughs> Together are the same three guys. <laughs> there's, all, there's literally 20 people that don't follow all three of us. <laughs> yeah. No, Luis J. Gomez is probably one person you want to follow you. Ro- Does Rogan follow Luis J. Gomez? That would be funny if he doesn't. I don't want to go through his followers because he's got too many. But does Rogan not follow Lewis J? That would be funny if he doesn't follow him. <laughs> he follows Dan Soda. He follows Big J. He follows um, Dave Smith, right? He follows all these other guys, but he doesn't follow Lewis J. Gomez. That would be funny if that's the case. <laughs> Rogan. 
<laughs> he's fucking uh he's he's a funny guy man he's a funny guy by the way i saw it on lewis's then i saw it on bobby's then i saw it on soda's it's annoying so all the dance it. fans hate me because i took over the spot <laughs> yeah, the bonfire you're not dan and you're like guys come on we're all the same because it all came from the same place no we're gonna blow up this is gonna be the biggest podcast and this is gonna be the biggest the regs. Podcast. and the regs with a z that's like whoa i don't know is that is that safe <laughs> is that safe to do? Spell stuff with Z's? Yeah, what up, what up? Bloop, bloop. The <laughs> no ever we really that. are just fucking boomer hacks. <laughs> dude, I got it, dude. The regs, but with a Z. <laughs> <laughs> and then we do the logo, 80s style. Nobody ran the regs with a Z by me either. I'm Not one thing's been run by me. So you, uh, you don't want to you do, do it. You don't want to show up for a you trailer. Don't you don't want to take a train I or Uber. I, yes, I, I did the lighting setup. I did everything. I, I paid you. I, 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 I paid you. I personally took money out of my my uh, out of my son's we, mouth. Yeah. You really? His mouth? He, was eating, he was eating money. What are you, Ted DiBiase? <laughs> <laughs> Gives him the sleeper hold. His son, is, his son is gay and retarded. He goes, it's time for bed, Max. I'm going to give you the million dollar dream. My name is James, Dad. <laughs> no, we oh, did yeah. try. We tr- I don't know if this is a podcast that anybody needs to be watching anytime soon. But, um, yeah, man. Trying to coordinate. Okay. Yeah, anyway, I, I don't know. It's a lot. There's a lot of podcasts out there at the moment. I'm not sure. Are you guys going to watch it in this chat? Um, are you guys gonna be a fan of watching the regs on YouTube? Let's see. If, let's see. If, w- w- where is it on anyway? Regs. What channel is it on? Regs with what? The regs. It's called the regs. Are you guys be tuning in to watch this podcast? There you go. It's called the regs. There's the channel. Uh, episode one. Uh, Robert Kelly. It's a pretty decent lineup. Don't get me wrong, but phew, it's a brutal one. <laughs> 